spoiler alert, this video will go over certain parts of the game which, if you haven't completed the story, might spoil it for you, so just be warned. Also, this is a beginner guide on how to play Warframe, but Warframe is so open, there's so many things to do, that this is just my personal take on what I think beginners should focus on or things they need to know. So just keep that in mind that this is just my opinion and you can play this game however you want, but this is just the advice I'd give to anyone beginning this game. Be warned, this video is going to be a little bit long. So if you are new, I would say please watch the whole thing because you'll probably find some interesting things that may help you, may not help you, you may already know all this, but if you want to try and look at something specific, I will have timestamps of all the different topics that I'll be covering down in the description. I will probably miss a couple. It's inevitable. This game has just so much in it to cover that um, it's very possible I could miss a couple things. Uh, but do mention them in the comments if you do find any, and I will make sure that I'll I'll put together like a second episode which might uh, fill in some of the gaps or maybe even make a more advanced tutorial for people who just want to know how to mod or want to understand a little bit more about their warframes and abilities and cool setups that they could do. Just let me know. First things first that I want to go over is two websites that you need to know about and that's Warframe Wiki and the Warframe Market. Warframe Wiki Literally, if you need to know anything, if you need to know about a mod, if you need to know about a Warframe, if you need to know where to farm certain materials, go to the Warframe wiki. Just type in the material, type in the Warframe, type in the mod, and then type in Warframe wiki afterwards, and it will give you an in-depth, like detailed explanation of what it is, where to farm it, where to find it, how to get it, everything. Say, for example, you're stuck on a story mission. Just look up Warframe Wiki, that story mission, and you'll be able to find a guide on how to complete it, what you need to do, everything. The second website you really need to know about is Warframe Market. Now, Warframe Market is a fan-made website where you can go and trade anything in the game that's tradable. If you've joined Warframe and you have a friend that you want to add, this is how you do it. You click Escape, you go down to communication and friends. You then click add friends and in here you have to type their exact name as it appears in game. Once you've typed it in you click send and it will tell you if it's sent or if it's failed. And if it's sent on their end they'll get a little notification saying so and so has added them and then once they've been added they'll appear in a list here. When they've appeared in this list you can then invite them to games, you can then join them in their sessions Friends only will allow friends to join you mid-game. Public will mean anyone can join you when the game decides. Solo means no one can join you. And invite only, you have to invite people for them to join you. So I generally leave it on public when doing most missions because having other people there makes it generally a bit easier. But if I'm trying to do something specific, I'll leave it on friends only so that if any of my friends want to join and help, they can. Probably got a couple of friends already who are in a clan. If you don't, that's fine, but basically to get invited to a clan, you need to have someone who's already in the clan invite you into that clan. Or you can go to the navigation and go to Maru's Bazaar and you can look at all the advertised clans that are currently being advertised and they will let you openly join. If you've received an invitation to a clan, it's very simple. You go to Escape, Communication, Clan, and it will show you the invitation there where you can accept it. Once you accept the invitation, you then need to go to your Foundry and craft your Clan key. This will allow you to access the Clan Dojo, so you can uh, go to the navigation and the Dojo will appear on your navigation screen. So you can see on my screen, I have the dojo here. This is Rising Samurais, this is our clan. And um, since I've joined, I'm able to go in and out of the dojo as I please. And when I go into the dojo, I can then uh, access the labs where I can buy blueprints and warframes, 
for credits. So it's generally quite useful to be in a clan. When joining a clan, I would always recommend that you join a clan that's rank 11. Rank 11 means that they've done all their research and they've uh, got basically everything available to buy. So whenever joining a clan, make sure it's rank 11 and buy all the blueprints. And then if you want to, you can leave, create your own clan or you can uh, join your friend's clan if they're not that leveled up. But generally, always join a rank 11 clan and then go and do whatever you want. That's generally my advice. Now that we've got all that out of the way, we're going to go and look at the Orbiter and the different stations within the Orbiter. We'll also look at Arsenal and generally uh, weapons, modding, basic things. I'm not going to go in depth into any of that because it can get very complicated and getting sort of... It gets very complicated at times. First and foremost, your navigation. This will display any current events that are running or uh, will also show you at the very bottom the world cycles so you can tell what type time, time of day it is uh, in the three different open world areas. The next one over here is the news and this just gives you like the hot fix that's recently happened, things that are coming into the game, any like updates that the developers want to send us will get sent to us. This is Conclave. Conclave is PvP in Warframe. It's not, um, there's not very many people doing PvP. You can give it a go, but I wouldn't join Warframe specifically just to play that. Then you have your syndicates where you can view all of your standing, the ones in Cetus or the ones in Deimos or the ones in Orvalis. You can check to see what your standing is currently at with those places. Next is the Codex. The Codex is basically the in-game wiki in your universe. It has information on companions, objects, warframes, vehicles. It's useful, but it, unfortunately it's, it's not useful in terms of telling you where things are. It just tells you what they are, what their abilities are, and what's in the game, all that sort of stuff. But it doesn't tell you where to farm them. And you can look at the weapons and see all the different weapons that are in the game. That's generally it. Then you also have this, which is basically the tutorial. It's better to watch YouTube videos on how to mod weapons and how they actually work, because this will only do so much. And then it also explains all the different mission types and what you have to do in each mission type. So if you need to know any more, type it into the Warframe Wiki and just go there instead. This is the in-game market. This is where you can buy blueprints, for credits or you can buy Warframes, skins and all that for Platinum. Platinum unfortunately is a um, currency which you generally have to buy, however you can farm in-game items and then go to the Warframe market, trade them to other people and people will give you plat and then you can use that plat to then buy things from in-game item from like the in-game market. Nora's Nightwave is it's basically the battle pass and it's completely free you just do the missions and you'll then level up and get rewards from it and it resets every so often so it, you can think of it like the game's battle pass really. When you come down into the main section of your orbiter on the right you'll have your foundry where you can build things like your warframes, your weapons, your keys, your all your boosters, all, all that sort of stuff. On the left you'll have your mod station, this is where you can view all the mods that you currently own. I want to very quickly go over the arsenal layout and how to use it really, uh, because I know some people might find it a little bit daunting at first when you're looking at it and you're just wondering what everything is, but uh, it's actually relatively simple in a way. Um, first off you have uh, you can choose what weapons you want to apply uh, to your class. You can also choose the Warframe that you want to use. So you can go through here and click on whichever Warframe you own and you can then change which one you're using. You can also change the primary weapons, secondary and then melee. Now this bit here is your focus school. This is my operator and your operator is the person who controls the warframes and you'll discover all this during second dream. So these are focus schools. 
and uh, each one can do different things. So Naramont is mainly about uh, to do with your melee for your Warframes. For Zanuric, you can activate an ability and gain energy, or you can also passively gain more energy when you pick up. Madurai increases the damage of your amp. Inaro is mainly orientated towards operator fighting. And Vazarin is to do with your affinity and gaining affinity. Now, obviously, they do a lot more than that. I know they do a lot more than that, but that's generally, basically, what they are used for and what they do. It obviously goes into a lot more detail because you saw those focus, you saw those focus trees going off a little bit further. But um, that's the basics of what each school does. If I was to recommend to anyone, I'd say get Zanuric or Madurai first, and then Naramon, Vazarin, and Yunaru you can get in whatever order you want. It doesn't really matter. Um, but to unlock these, after you've completed Second Dream, you'll get access to uh, your operator. But the way that you actually put focus towards your focus schools is you need to use a focus lens. So a focus lens is something you apply to your Warframe or your weapon. And you can access it through the actions menu. And if you click on it, it will then give you a list of different focus lenses you can apply, where any affinity that I gain will be converted into focus for that specific focus school. So for example, in Zanuric, when you uh, unlock it, I would always recommend you go as soon as you can to Hard and Wellspring. Hard and Wellspring is how you feed yourself energy. So when you unlock these, you'll then be able to jump into your operator, activate this ability, go back into your Warframe, get energy, use your abilities, and keep fighting. So this is just the one I recommend the most. Moving over to the other tab, you have your companion loadout. This is where you can adjust what companions come with you. Uh, so for example, Helios, he has a mod called Investigator, which will automatically scan your surroundings. For any beginners, I would say get the carrier. Try and get your hands on the carrier. I think you can buy the blueprint from the market and then get a uh, vacuum because that then allows you to pick up uh, items, mods, everything. When you're killing things, you can just pick up all the loot from a much uh, much further away. It can pick it up. Next, we have the gear wheel. The gear wheel is very important because whenever you go into open world or if you're going around missions, uh, just everything, you generally want to put uh, all the really important stuff that you're going to use regularly on the gear wheel like for example when you go into open world or missions you can get certain missions where you use your necromech or if you're in open world you can launch your archwing and that means you can get around open world a lot faster you can also use your k-drive in open world you can't use your k-drive or uh, archwing in missions but you can use the necromech in some missions mainly uh, in Railjack missions though. You can also buy ciphers, cipher traps, or synthetic or synthesis scanners from Cephalon Samaris, so you can do scanning of enemies for him. You can also get uh, mining, fishing, and uh, hunting equipment from the different uh, open world areas, and that way you can then gather resources um, fish and uh, hunt animals in open worlds. You can also get ciphers. Ciphers are really useful for automatically completing puzzles. So when you uh, stick your powers on into a puzzle and you have to unlock it, you can use a cipher which will automatically complete that puzzle for you. So those are some really useful things that I would say you need to put on your uh, gear wheel. And then we come over to the final um, tab, which is Archwings, K-Drives, and, and Necromechs. Um, Necromechs are quite are something you're going to have to grind for. Um, so uh, these you can get on Deimos. You have to do Deimos bounties, and um, it 
can take some time, but um, they're well worth it. And they also, you have to also get this for when you go to do a new war. You need a Necromech and you need a uh, Railjack to start the mission new war. But in here you can adjust what weapon you use whilst you're in your archwing. You can adjust what melee you use when you're in your archwing and same goes for when you're Necromech. Um, but that's generally the um, menu. Uh, if I was to recommend an archwing, I would say try and get the Itzel. The Itzel is just really fast. Uh, so when you're going around open world, it's just designed to be fast. Um, so it's quite useful. It also uh, has something called Cosmetic Crush, where um, it will suck in loot from a small AoE. And when you're doing Eidolon hunting, you can click it next to all the loot and it'll suck in everything when, when you kill or when you capture the Eidolon. And then it just makes it easier for picking stuff up, which is quite useful. Um, yeah, quite useful. Just as an example, I'm going to pull up this completely unranked uh, weapon that I've never used before and I'm going to upgrade it. And you can see in the top left it says capacity 22. So this means this weapon only has a capacity of 22. And when you level it up, so when you go from 0 to 33, you will gain more capacity. But another way to also uh, have more capacity is to go to the actions menu at the bottom right an Arokin Catalyst. And uh, Arokin Catalysts can be bought from Nora's Nightwave with her credits that you gain from doing uh, the weeklies. Uh, you can also buy it with Plat, or you can get gifted it, or you can, there's, a, there's a number of ways to get them. Um, but when you get an Arokin Catalyst, you can then put it on a weapon uh, and it will increase, as, it, as you can see it says, double your mod capacity. So Warframes have this exact same system, except they use Orokin reactors rather than Orokin catalysts. And when you fully rank up a weapon to 30, you can then also polarize it. So you can put a former in it. And you know, that also uh, can increase the capacity if you match the polarities up. For beginners, I would say use auto-install mods. I know People are going to scream at me, people are going to be like, no, don't use auto-install, it's terrible. I agree with you, auto-install is terrible. But generally, when you auto-install, it will just try and fit as many mods on as possible. Just because it says it does a lot of damage doesn't mean it's actually doing a lot of damage. Modding can get very complicated, and this is exactly why it's... Um, you would prefer... I'd prefer if you went and watched like an actual modding video on how to mod a weapon properly. When it comes to recommending people on Warframes to get or weapons to get, my go-to recommendation is always Necros and Wukong in terms of Warframes. So this is Wukong, and you can see by hovering over his abilities, you can tell what they do. So his first ability is his Celestial Twin, which will create a clone of himself. Then his second ability is his Cloudwalker ability, He'll basically heal himself as he flies around, which is very cool. Means also enemies can't hit him. Defy is an ability where any damage dealt to him whilst he's in an invulnerable state will then be dealt back to the enemy over however long or however much like you got from it. And then last but not least, his fourth ability, his Primal Fury, means he summons an Iron Staff. Wukong would be one of my recommendations for a, a Warframe to get. Next up is Necros. Necros is a Warframe who boosts resources from doing missions and he's just generally really useful for resource gathering. Most of his abilities you don't really use. The only ability that you really want to be concerned about is Desecrate. Desecrate is the ability which forces fallen enemies around you to drop an additional amount of loot which is just really, really useful. When you are building him in terms of modding, you generally want to build for range, which means that enemies that are further away from you still drop an additional loot if they get killed. And this is the Boltor. This is the weapon that I'd recommend to most beginner players because it only requires you to be mastery rank two 
uh, to use it or to buy it and you can buy it from the market from the in-game market and you buy the blueprint and then you just need to put some materials together and you've got it the nucor is another great weapon this is a secondary weapon this is what you'd get from going to a clan and you get it from the clan labs helmuth helmuth is a basically a part of your ship already however you do not get the helmuth segment uh right off the bat you do need to go and farm that and you get that from deimos and you have to buy it from sun and to buy it from Sun, you do have to be level 3 standing with Entrati, which is the family on Deimos. Um, so the best way to go and do that is go and do bounty missions for Mother, collect a bunch of tokens, give Grandmother your tokens every day, level up your standing, get to rank 3, and then buy the Helmer segment. Uh, you can uh, do something quite unique, which is you can sacrifice any normal frame into the helmet and you can then take one of it one of the warframe's abilities and move it to other frames so for example uh there's a warframe called severgoth severgoth you go and farm him in uh, railjack missions and once you've made him uh you can then put him into the helmet and you'll get his ability which is called gloom now Gloom is a ability where when you activate it and you kill enemies within an AoE of yourself, it will it will feed you health. So when you kill enemies, it gives you health. Um, and you can put that on any Warframe. You can just take that ability and put it on any Warframe. Um, however, the abilities that you get from sacrificing Warframes is pre-chosen. You can't just take any ability from any Warframe, it's pre-chosen. So when you sacrifice a Warframe, you'll get a set ability back, but you can put that on any Warframe basically anywhere. There are some exceptions. Um, I know for a fact that Rhino um, has something where you can't uh, put like Eclipse on him or something because he already has a damage buff ability so you can't have multiple of those so. but there aren't too many restrictions it's actually really fun and I really recommend doing this because instead of uh, getting a Warframe leveling it up and then immediately selling it just for loadout space you're sacrificing it to this frees up loadout space and also gives you something in return so I would say for any new person, try and get this as soon as possible. It's really useful. Another station I think you need another station I think you really need to understand is the Void Relics. This is your relic stand where you will be able to level up your relics, view your relics, just basically see which ones you have and rank up the ones that you have. So if you enter into it, you'll see it has a big list of all the relics that you currently own. Now when you begin you won't have that many, but when you play the game for more and more you'll just get loads and loads and loads of relics. If you have a Warframe or weapon that you want to grind for, want to find specifically, like for example, if uh, I wanted to go and grind Garuda, I would type in Garuda into the search bar and then I can see which relics give Garuda. So you can see in this Miso P7 relic, it has the Garuda Prime Chassis as a um, an uncommon reward. And I can then go, okay, I specifically want to try and get that Garuda Prime Chassis. So I want to level up my relic to Flawless. And then when I level it up to Flawless, it will then mean I have a slightly higher chance of getting that uncommon reward section. So I have a slightly higher chance of getting the Garuda Prime Chassis. Prime simply means it has a higher base stat than the non-prime version of that thing. So you can get Warframes and then you can get Prime Warframes. You can get weapons and then you can get Prime weapons. And they are generally just the slightly better version of the base version. 
So for example, with my Titania here, this is Titania Prime, but uh, yeah, which will have slightly higher base stats than if I was to use normal Titania. There's nothing wrong with using a normal Titania or using a normal Volt or normal anything, but generally when you get the Prime version, you can then invest a lot more because they have higher base stats and it allows you to put a whole bunch more stuff on them. My advice to people would be don't invest too heavily in non-prime warframes because then you'll just have to reinvest into the prime version when they eventually come out. Now, you're gonna ask, well, how do I get prime? How do I get prime weapons? How do I get prime warframes? There's a couple different ways you can do this. You can either buy relics from the warframe market, uh, the one, the fan-made one, you can get relics from there to open and potentially get what you want or you can go and farm relics uh, you need to check if it's vaulted or unvaulted and what that means is that certain warframes and weapons are on a rotation and they get locked from the drop so if you did a mission and that thing is vaulted it's not going to drop so you need to check if Say, for example, if you do want to tiny Prime, just an example, you'd need to go online and you need to check if she's currently vaulted or not. If she is vaulted, then the only way to get her, you can either get it from players or Prime Resurgents. So if a Warframe or weapon is unvaulted, look up what relic it is and what mission that relic drops in. Once you've got the relic, you can then go and open that relic and try and get whatever's inside. That's generally how you'd get prime items. There's another feature in this game which I think a lot of people don't know about but should know about, and it's the chat linking feature. And basically, what it allows you to do is if you want to send anyone, like your, you want to link a build or you want to link what your Warframe looks like, or you want to link a mod, a, a material, a you can literally link anything in this game. All you have to do is square open bracket and then type whatever it is that you're trying to link. So for example, I can link um, Titania, for example, and you can see it comes up with a little list of it's suggesting you put in, but I just want Titania. So then when I enter that in, it then links to Tanya. Hey, do you have any Vitality mods? You can be like, hmm, I don't know. And then you can link Vitality. And then if you click on it, like for example, I have seven Vitality mods. Uh, so it's a really, really useful system that I think a lot more people should know about. Um, you can also use it um, to link builds and link looks. So for example, if I go to Titania, Appearance, there's a little chain, oh, you can't see it. If I was doing here. But you can see up here in the top corner, there's a little uh, chain link. If I click that, it will open the chat. And then if I enter it or send it to someone, I can then click on it and it will send them my appearance or the look that I've given my Titania. Then they can apply that look to their Warframe if they have all the parts that you have. Um, or they can just look at it and go, wow, that looks nice or not. Um, you can also go to upgrade and in the top right, again, there's a little chain link. If you click that and then put it into the chat and then click on it, it will then show you the mods that you have put on your Warframe and then anybody else can then apply those mods to their setup. So if you go into a mission and someone says, hey, I really like that build that you're using. Can you link it to me? Well, now you know how to do it. Just go to the top right, link, and then enter it into the chat and send it to whoever you want to. Well, thank you very much for watching. Um, I know for a fact there are still a bunch of things that I still need to cover. So I'm going to be making a part two and probably making this into a mini series where there are some tips and tricks and I'm also going to be doing a video which goes a little bit deeper on modding and builds that you can do um, 
I think that'd probably be better than trying to cram it all into this really long episode. I think, like, I think currently it's going to be 30 minutes long this video, but um, hopefully, you, hopefully, you find a any of it, if at all, any of it, like, interesting. Um, but thank you very much for watching, and I hope to see you in the next uh, installment, I guess. Uh, thank you.